Whoa! It's my yearbook. Look. <laughs> That's the year I was born. Let's see if we can find me. You, are. <laughs> you look the same. You just look like a little baby. Yeah, just wrinkly. We did wear nurses' caps. Too. I am so happy we don't have to wear those caps. <laughs> I love the cap. <laughs> I want the cap. Let's see. Okay, so I open it like this. Yeah, it kind of sits on the back. Like this? Yeah. Beautiful. I think it's pretty good. I love it. I love it. You don't like it? <laughs> no. I'm going to toss this around in my like, graduation. We're all going to take a picture with it and make our own yearbook. <laughs> Get ready for some nursing real talk. This, this, this is the break room. What are one of the biggest changes that you guys think you've seen in the field? Nurses don't stay. When I was a nursing student, that was a coveted position. People had to, I hate to say it, but die for you to get a spot there. Now we can't even keep people. I think that nursing has changed a lot. I think that you're seeing a lot more second career, like accelerated BSN programs sure. and people like mm -hmm. going back and changing their career paths. I see more teamwork now than we did in the past. The younger physicians now coming in, they look at the RN as a team member. I have a role to do, you have a role to do, and we're there for the benefit of the patient. I think nurses do have more of a voice. We are people that are very well educated and becoming more respected within medicine. Physicians, that relationship has changed. I can remember having to give my seat up for a doctor. We used to have to do that. And I remember being at the hospital we're at now and one of the older doctors I had gotten up and he goes, what are you doing? Don't ever do that again. Yeah. I think the biggest changes, and it's very scary right now post-COVID, is that the number of temporary nurses in institutions is absolutely frightening. There are too many travelers, there are too many contract nurses, and how can an institution, whatever it is, whatever setting, be stable when you have people coming and going all the time? I am an ER travel nurse. The contract can be as little as four weeks to 13 weeks plus. You have freedom for scheduling, you have freedom of not being into the hospital politics of what's going on. So you're there for a, a good time, not, not a, a long, long time. time. Exactly. <laughs> the cons about it, you don't have rapport with the staff. There is no trust. You have to acclimate fast. And it's a and generational that, thing. We were raised by a generation that live to work yeah and we're the generation that we work so that we can live our lives at the end of the day like this is not your end all be all being a nurse is part of your identity but that is not your sole identity what's the most outdated nursing practice from the past you can think of i feel like when i started they would talk about how like they just wouldn't wear gloves peri care cleaning a patient no gloves. We didn't feed patients forever post-op. Remember on the floor when you had the medication room, you had the medication cart, and you had the little white cards <laughs> yeah. that you had to write down. Johnny Jones gets aspirin this and, size, and, right? and you had to write it on there. You had a million little cards and you had to pour your own medications. Yes. You had to mix your own IV. And the little cups. How about glass IV bottles? Oh the yeah. Glass <laughs> IV bottles. And they, they fall on the floor and they would bang. Actually, I had a glass IV bottle thrown at me in the ER of Belgium. Oh no. Thank God I was young enough to move real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't necessarily think that technology is a bad thing in nursing. It's all on how you use it. We spend more time with the computer than the patient. We just keep adding more. It's never ending. It's never ending. And it takes away from the patient. We like people. Nurses <laughs> like people. And we go into it for people. I'm going to tell you, in the middle of my orientation, instead of my mentors orienting me on how to be a nurse, I had to orient them on how to use a computer. Right. Yeah. They were like, how do you do this? And I was like, oh, this is how you, this is how you type that. The nurses are like, and they're that always like so looking funny. and it, it slows them down a I lot. I still get that today. Like, you you type so fast. I never forget when my unit got the scanner for the meds. Yeah. And I was like, I feel like I'm at the supermarket, like Cheetos, Snicker bar, veggies. <laughs> and then really you're like, Metoprolol, aspirin, Plavix, here you go, bye. But remember, there was no iPads. I remember it was blue nurses notes. Right. Get the chart and you sit down there and write your nurses Now notes. you just sit at the computer. Exactly. Orders come up. That's right. And the pharmacy, don't they bring everything all set for you? In the ER, there's a pharmacist right there now. Okay. Everything was here. Every little thing. They couldn't do it today. No, couldn't they couldn't. It. They couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're kind of in the middle of 
nurses being more respected because we use evidence-based practices. It's not just like Florence Nightingale and we put a bandage on you. There's definitely more like nurse-driven protocols now, I think, than when we first started. There's nursing. There's nurse-driven departments, like the trauma center at the hospital that we worked at. The trauma area is nurse-driven. The nurses are the front line of that department. And this is a level one trauma center where the worst of the worst comes in. People don't go to a hospital for medical care. They go for nursing care. But if you need to be in a hospital, it's the nurse that's taking care of you. Valerie, remember the other day we were talking about all the pandemics that we mm -hmm. have lived through. We lived through AIDS. Mm -hmm. We lived through SARS. We Ebola. lived through MERS. We lived through Ebola. And now COVID. I mean, we've been through five mm -hmm. or more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You always have to have a nurse. But how do you keep the nurse at the bedside? I think first off, it's, it's being honest about what nursing is. People don't know how hard it could be, but also I don't think people know how great and wonderful and fulfilling it can be when you get to, you know, make that impact on somebody. Saying that like nursing is like more flexible mm -hmm. is a great thing. Like you don't have to work five days a week. You can work three <laughs> days a week. Go in the grocery store on a Monday, no one's there. It's the best. <laughs> it's the best. You can really support yourself and a family with one nurse's salary. Mm -hmm. You don't have to just do bedside. You can be an educator, you can work for an insurance company. There's just so much opportunity. What other career can we do? And if you hate it to tomorrow, you can do something else and completely reinvent yourself without having to really start over. Where could you do that? I'm very passionate about my profession. Why not? You're helping other people. There's so many negative things going around right now and you are able to put all that stuff that that's going on outside and put efforts into humanity. If somebody came up to me and said, should I become a nurse and why? I think that I would tell them like, you have to be ready to lose yourself in service to others, right? Like it's such a selfless degree. We give a lot more than we take. It takes a special kind of person. If you're down for that, if you put the fun and dysfunctional and you enjoy the chaos, then nursing is for you.